And good evening, and welcome to another edition of the Shadow Gallery. I, as am always, your host, James Donnelly. And uh, we're going to do a review for you. A television review. If you can imagine it. Yeah, I know, it's been a while. Because the last one I did was for the finale of Smallville, I believe. So this will be along the same kind of genre alley. Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to review the uh, series premiere of Alphas, uh, the new series on sci-fi, um, in which there is only one real uh, actor of uh, major accomplishments, and that's David Strathairn, um, who's been working in uh, film for many, 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 many years. Uh, more recently recognizable, at least to uh, genre fans, as a character of Noah Vosen uh, in The Bourne Ultimatum. Um, but anyway, this is uh, basically the premise of the show. Uh, it was uh, co-created by Zach Penn. Uh, for those of you who don't know Zach Penn, he is uh, unfortunately no stranger to uh, genre television, or I'm well, uh, genre work, I should say. Um, he, uh, wrote, he co-wrote the script for X-Men 3, The Last Stand, which is by far the worst of the X-Men films. Um, but after seeing X-Men First Class, uh, that's not too dubious of a distinction, because that one's pretty bad, too. Um... He, uh, he wrote uh, the script for uh, The Incredible Hulk, not the Hulk film uh, by Ang Lee, but The Incredible Hulk film uh, directed by Louis Leterrier, uh, but, and also starred uh, Edward Norton, the reboot, if you will. Um, but it was uh, Norton himself, uh, being somewhat of an accomplished screenwriter, um, or script doctor, I should say, because he also did script work on American History X. Um, he rewrote a pretty good deal of the film, which is why, it, which is probably why it works. Um, he also wrote the original script for the Avengers film that will be coming out next year. But of course, uh, when they brought in Joss Whedon to direct it, Joss, and rightly so wrote it himself, from probably taking some story cues from Zach Penn regardless, but he pretty much completely rewrote it himself. Anyway, so he's not a stranger to writing tales about superheroes, which is basically what this show is. Um, the show itself uh, is about uh, people with special powers. Um, it's not... Uh, Okay, so uh, last TV season we had The Cape, okay, which I also did a review of. Uh, and that was such an awful show that I you know, couldn't believe that actually somebody committed that to paper, and then the paper went into uh, hiring actors and actresses and directors and them actually putting that on TV. Uh, and some actors and actresses that I respect, like Keith David and Summer Glau. Um, but anyway, uh, the, the last real kind of superhero-ish TV series that was on uh, was Heroes, uh, which most of us know. Uh, the first season was brilliant. Uh, some It's one of the best single uh uh, seasons of TV that I think I've ever seen, um, and then everything went downhill from there. I didn't even bother to watch season four, uh, the final season. Um, but this really kind of picks up on the good role that we saw in season one of Heroes. We basically have where we begin four characters. Uh, we have, um, uh, we have Harkin, uh, who's uh, an FBI agent, or former FBI agent, uh, who can, uh, basically, he can, they each have a designation to their actual power. Um, I can't remember what they're defined as. 
Um, but uh, Harkin, um, he can uh, he can basically uh, subdue his fight or flight response so that his body can totally amp up his adrenaline, which gives him supremely enhanced strength. Uh, so much that he actually pushes a rather large SUV <laughs> out of uh, the way of his, uh, that's blocking his driveway. That's when we first meet him, of course. Um, there's uh, Nina, uh, who uh, can basically kind of induce her will on other people. Um, there is... Uh, um, uh, there's Gary... Uh, who is a, a very high-functioning autistic savant um, who can see, who can literally see uh, radio waves, cell waves, uh, Wi-Fi, you know, and any sort of wireless connectivity. He can actually see those waves, and they actually, rep, you know, and he can actually tune into television and things like that. Um, and then we have uh, who I believe is the most interesting character, uh, which is Rachel. Um, and Rachel's, uh, you know, young, you know, these are all young people, except for Harkin, the character of Harkin's, you know, is probably in his forties, uh, but the rest of them are probably in their, uh, mid to late twenties. Uh, Rachel, uh, uh, a young girl of Middle Eastern descent, um, she is, uh, she has the most interesting ability. Uh, and the most interesting cost to that ability, which is that she can enhance one of her senses, so, but to a point where it actually removes uh, almost, you know, at the cost of one other sense, uh, or all of them. Uh, for instance, if she's, you know, uh, you know, she's smelling things, she's, uh, you know, but that takes away her hearing and her ability to speak. Um, and, you know, if she's looking intensely at something she can't hear, um, or smell, you know, there's, like I said, there's lots of really interesting possibilities with that character. Um, and, uh, basically the series starts off, um, now these are played by mostly unknowns. Uh, the only person that uh, has any other kind of real uh, uh, kind of career is uh, Laura Minnell, the girl who plays Nina. She's been in quite a bit of TV, uh, a lot of genre TV, uh, you know, played bit parts here and there, but has been in, you know, has been in films. Um, and of course, uh, uh, then there's uh, David Sutheran who plays uh, Dr. Uh, Lee Rosen, who is kind of this, uh, you know, weird mixture of, uh, he's kind of like the Professor X character, I guess. Um, but he's not, he doesn't have, at least as far as we can tell right now, a power. Um, he is just, you know, he's committed to kind of keeping his alphas safe. And basically, what that's what they are. They're a cohesive team. Um, and uh, they're for, you know, the investigation that they embark on at the behest of uh, Rosen's boss, uh, played by uh, Callum Keith Rennie, who uh, many of you know from, if you've watched The Killing recently uh, on AMC, he was uh, the, you know, soon-to-be husband of Sarah Linden, uh, and uh, also uh, then obviously he was in uh, Battlestar Galactica for pretty much the entire run of the show, although he would just kind of pop in and out. Um, he's played a lot of characters. Uh, he's, he's a really good character actor, and I like him a lot. He's really good in this show, and so is Strathairn. Um, their first assignment is basically somebody makes this, uh, somebody kills uh, a witness uh, in federal custody um, that is uh, basically um, involved. Uh, uh, it's they don't know how he was killed. He was shot. He was shot dead. Where there's there's no there's no doors. You know there's there's only one door. There's no windows. You know do we have an invisible man? What's going on? 
Uh, so they eventually tracked down a uh, another alpha, uh, Cameron Hicks. You know, he's the you know, because the, these shows they need a rugged, you know, unshaped, you know, you know, kind of, you know, five, you know, constantly five o'clock shadow, kind of shaved head, military-looking guy, you know, who's strong, um, and he can basically make these impos. He can uh, kind of see these impossible shots, whether it's baseball or whether it's he was a, a sniper uh, in the Marines. I'm assuming, um, probably Marine Force Recon, anyway. Uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, and, you know, their job is to find out why he, you know, to find him, find out why he did this. It turns out to be, you know, it becomes a vast, uh, you know, it becomes a vast arc um, in which there's basically this opposing team to uh, Rosen's alphas, alphas of their own, you know, alphas that are on the outside that are basically using their talents for wrongdoing for evil. These are the good alphas, and out there are the bad alphas, and they could be trying to, you know, either infiltrate or kill. Um, there's some really interesting stuff going on here. It was a very entertaining hour and a half of TV, uh, this pilot episode. Um, I'd easily give this an 8 out of 10. Uh, it was... Uh, I liked the relationships that the team has. I like the fact that they work as a team uh, as opposed to just kind of going off. And it skips the part, it skips the, admittedly, the most, you know, in many cases, the most boring part of the kind of superhero, uh, which is the, uh, which is the origin story. Um, these guys are already in it. These guys are already doing it. And so we don't need a whole lot of backstory, which I'm sure that we'll get. But we didn't know we didn't need to start with it, um, and that's what I'm glad that they did. They didn't go from okay, well this happened to this person, that's why they're like this. Um, you know, the cast uh, the guy who plays Harkin, uh, Malik Yoba, um, he's he's pretty strong. He's good. Ryan Cartwright plays Gary, the autistic. He's really good. Um, a lot of the fun of, of the show is, seems kind of poking at his expense, which is a little unsettling uh, because he is autistic. Um, but you know, I guess you know they make him so high functioning that you know there are a lot you know. But he has some really good bits as well. He has some good kind of jabs at other characters. So um, uh, the guy who plays uh, Hicks, he's uh, Warren Christie. Um, you know, he's, he's kind of the white bread to uh, this sandwich, uh, this rather rich sandwich. Um, you, know, he's, you know, he's like the, the, the strong, silent, heroic rogue type. Um, and then you've got, uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce her name, uh, the girl who plays Rachel. Um, it's Zita uh, Ganizada, which may be right. She's really good. Um, of all of the characters that I saw on the show, hers was the one I gravitated the most towards because she has the most interesting ability. I think has the you know possibly like the most interesting relationship on the show with Dr. Rosen and Strathairn, as almost always is fucking brilliant. Uh, going back to when he was you know back into the days when John Sales was uh, making films rather consistently with Strathairn in them. Uh, he's just, you know, he's still definitely on top of this game. Even have, even in a role that's kind of marginalized, uh, in a genre that's marginalized, he really stands out. Um, you know, you can definitely tell he's the big pro uh, that's on board here. Um, but, uh, you know, over, overall, uh, I'm looking forward to more episodes of this series. I hope that this is one of the shows that sci-fi keeps... Uh, as opposed to uh, one of my favorite other shows uh, on on, sci on uh, sci-fi, uh, Outer Space Astronauts, which I don't know if it's coming back yet or not. It doesn't seem to be. It should because it was damn funny, um, and it has one of my best friends in it. Um, so uh, that's it for this review of the season premiere of Alphas from me, James Donnelly of the Shadow Gallery. Uh, check out my other reviews, check out my comic stuff. You know, like, dislike, agree, disagree, let me know. So, 
This is me, the Shot of Grey Life, saying goodbye.